Brady and Orion, appreciate your time. Give me your time again for uh, for another interview. Uh, different circumstances this time. We've got the health order that is going to come into effect on Friday, starting Friday, that will allow businesses, including lodgings, to reopen gradually under certain restrictions. How about we actually just start with kind of overviewing what the restrictions will be for lodgings, restaurants. We'll, we'll start with those two. I'll hit um, the first part of that and let Ryan take lodging. Um, really, for all business, we are referring them to the phased guidelines for general public and businesses that is part of Utah Leads 2.0 and can be found on coronavirus.utah.gov and seuhealth.com. So for each business, and I, and I know it, it's not all encompassing, but um, businesses and activities have a set of recommendations that go along with them that we are adopting in, in conjunction with um, the, the rest of the state that gives business an opportunity to open, but recognizes that they need controls in place. They need um, face masks for people interacting with public. They need to limit congregation in any public spaces and things like that. Uh, restaurants will be will need to ensure that there's uh, at least six feet between uh, different uh, groups and that and they will adjust you know their their menus and and how they take payment and things like that um, so we are directly referring to that guidance uh, for the for our businesses then lodging I'll let Orion take all right so so lodging um we recognize that that Moab is unique and in that we're a destination community, um, and we need to look at our emergency medical services and all of that kind of stuff in a in a way. And, and one thing that we determined is that our, our ability to take care of people that become ill has vastly increased from where we were several weeks ago. Um, however, it's still important for us to limit visitation to our area to some to some degree and the the easiest way to do that is through lodging restrictions limiting the number of people that have the ability to stay here and thus limiting the the influx of visitors um, so uh, essentially we uh, we in conjunction with uh, so many others have put together the lodging requirements um, uh, which includes uh, occupancy limitations as well as um, uh, facial covering use. You know, I, I, I like to use the term facial covering instead of mask because we need to keep like quote unquote manufactured masks in the hands of our, our medical providers. Um, so, like for me, I have my thing, and you know, Carter's got his thing, and I'm sure Brady's got one somewhere. So you don't have yours, Brady? Oh, I do. I've got a whole little packet of stuff. Okay, good. Love good math. Good. So anyway, uh, moving on, it, it's um, the lodging restrictions that we put into place. Uh, there, we had a lot of input on getting that put together. Um, there's membership from county councils and the the city and the you know the the travel council and the chamber of commerce and uh, and and businesses alike. In, in drafting those that rule to, and it's not a rule yet, I have to clarify that. This, this was, commun what, what went out yesterday was communication to our businesses of what to expect so they can prepare. And so many, many man hours went into that uh, lodging restriction and to come out with, with what came out yesterday. The hospital, of course, also was involved. With, with uh all that in mind, the first question I have for you guys is how do we know that now is a safe time to start doing this to, you know, conditionally reopen Moab? And how do we know that this is the right way to do it? That is a, an extremely hard question to answer. And, you know, this, this is the best idea that we could come up with, uh, you know, we being everybody that I mentioned before that was involved. Um, that feels like we we can do it, and we we feel far. We know that we're far more prepared, as I as I mentioned before. And we have to also look at other aspects of this. I mean, coronavirus is 
one significant health risk that's occurring right now. However, side effects of the restrictions we put into place over time include other health risks, such as you know, mental health issues, uh, substance abuse issues, those kind of things. And, and those things need to be taken into account as well. We don't have a very good idea of how, how, how much those things have increased, but they inherently have. And when people don't have the ability to, uh, to work and to support their livelihood, th those risks are going to increase. And so we need people to go back to work so that they can, because that's a healthy thing for them to be able to provide for themselves and their families. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, having other mitigation factors put into place, increased testing, facial coverings, uh, increased sanitation, and, and overall uh, change in the, the way people look at doing daily business. Well, that being said, there are a few things we are looking at, and uh, including what's the rate of utilization of hospital beds, not only in Moab, but through the state for hospitals that could be supportive if necessary. What is the transmission rate in this state? And, and whereas it started up near three, so three people were being, becoming infected for every one person that had the disease, now it's hovering around one. And that, that was a goal that, that we set as a state uh, early on in this process. So there are some, some of those measures in, in, in combined with the testing issues that help to, us to know that, uh, that we are more prepared and, and able to respond more rapidly to changes that may occur with the, with the disease in a community. Since the, since the order was announced or the uh, since the expected amendments to the order were, were announced yesterday, we've gotten a few comments. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I was talking to Ryan before, I, I know that you have as well, about citizens really concerned about what, what this means, what the change means um, in terms of health risks and the, the, the risk that it puts locals at. So the next question I want to ask is, how much of a risk do we face of seeing a surge of COVID-19 cases locally as we start to conditionally reopen? And to what degree is it concerning that lodgings might fill to their newly allotted capacity under this plan, especially once the parks, the national parks reopen, which is the timeline isn't set as far as I know. I, I think we can safely say we will expect an increase in, in the number of cases we see in Grand County. I don't expect that we would classify it as a surge, the type of surge we, we anticipated a month and a half ago uh, with the numbers that, that uh, were projected. But um, we'll have increased uh, interactions between people and, and that will result in some level of effect, infection. And I think as, as well, it's been demonstrated that people love Moab and will will come to Moab as avail as it it becomes more and more available. So part of the way to mitigate the risk, not necessarily eliminate it, we don't expect it to be eliminated, but would be for uh, every business um, and every visitor and, and, and resident to, to really take heart um, the recommendations and say, I, am, I, am, I will wear a face covering in, in this um, social situation. And I will wash my hands more often. And, and we would hope everyone does that. We don't expect 100% compliance. But if we get most people to comply with that, that decreases everybody's risk. And so that's, that's a mitigating factor for us that even though there, there is an increased interaction on, on one hand, businesses and people are changing their behaviors to decrease the risk on the other hand, and, and we, we hope that those offset to some degree. So in the event that the majority of Moab or that a large number of people in Moab have remained unexposed to COVID-19, which would mean you know, that they don't have any kind of immunity to it, what does that mean for the health and well-being of the community now that we're inviting people to town? Of course, we don't, we don't know for sure whether people have developed antibodies because we don't, haven't done enough testing on that front to know. Um, but in the event that 
people have not been exposed to COVID-19, don't have the antibodies. What does that mean for local health as we are inviting people to Moab? So, so what we have to recognize is that we're in a, a, a vastly different place than we were several weeks ago. We have these other mitigation techniques in place. We have the, 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 the supplies that our medical people need. We have the ability to transport, uh, uh, transport patients to other areas where there, there may be more beds if needed, so on and so forth. And so we are in a very different place than we were back then. We may have lower, um, we, we may have seen a lot less disease than we would have normally expected, but that was the goal in the first place, right? And so now as we move forward, um, even if we have seen less exposures in our area, the mitigations that are in place are going to protect those people from and, and, and keep the, that potential of a surge down. If we start to see, I mean, well, you said that we should expect to see more cases in, in Grand County of COVID-19 because of this partial reopening. So at what point, though, do we know that we're past a threshold that we need to, like, start tamping down again? Is it, like, a, how do we know that we have the testing capacity to stay ahead of a, a significant surge, or how do we know that we need to do something different than what's coming? It's a very good question, and I think it's important to, to also recognize that um, I think all of rural Utah um, has questioned why rural Utah's rates are, are so low. Um, if you look in the Uinta Basin through central Utah, there's not been a lot of cases in any of those areas, and, and so I think as, as we discussed that with other health departments, they're expecting to see an increase as well uh, um, in, in cases in their area. As you, as you talk, opens up, um, but we first of all wanted to be able to know that we could test everybody in the area that had a symptom of COVID nineteen. That was really the step one, and we we have achieved that. Um, and now it's a matter of can we um, test people that maybe are working in a high risk um, occupation? Um, are you you know and and We'll just talk about grocery store employees. They've been, they are constantly interfacing with a large group of public. Um, and so um, in conjunction with Moab Regional Hospital, we've laid out a plan to, to work with different employers that are in a high risk population to occasionally um, test those employees to see if they're asymptomatic carriers, to see if there's been exposure that we're not aware of. of. Um, and so we're, we're pleased to, to be rolling that out. And that's another step in the process. The final step will be able to, to uh, I don't know if it'll be final, but one uh, critical step in, in, in being able to maybe, we'll say, open to a greater degree is, can we test people that have been exposed over multiple days? Um, so we know on day one, that they're negative and we can maybe test them on day three and are they negative again? And so they can continue to work until maybe they test positive on day five. Um, but we, we don't necessarily have to do that quarantine or isolation for the entire 14 days, but we have a, a, a real time view of what their um, disease status is. And to clarify that, that's not to, be like, we really think this person has it and we're just gonna keep letting them work. It's a, it, there's a, a lower degree of likelihood and we're able to test to, com, uh, to continue confirmation of that. How will we know if we need to tamp down again, if we need to disinvite, or, or are you hoping to not have to do that and just you know, move forward with a partially, partial reopening and uh, manage it from there? I certainly think the, the hope is to not have to return to, you know, a level of red where things are shut down um, significantly. That is the hope. But um, again, we'll kind of refer to uh, probably one of the first um, measures that we'll look at is what is the, pos uh, the rate of positive tests that we are looking at in, in the area. You know, right now, the state of Utah started out at 5%. Now they're a little closer to 4 we're below 1%. We'll look at, is that trending up? 
is it matching Utah? Is it exceeding Utah? Uh, the the rate that Utah is testing positive. Those will be things we we keep in in mind, and we'll look at um, is there a rate of hospitalizations that we would maybe not expect it is greater than we we want to see, and, and those could be indicators of a hot spot that would be a you know maybe a return to red. I think uh, we all understand that we would rather progress in this positive direction where we open more and more, but given the the variances that happen with this, this disease, we have to be, be prepared for both, both pathways. Herd immunity. This is a term that, uh, you know, I've seen thrown around in different forums. I think it would be helpful to kind of clarify what it means whether it's something that is good or bad, or is is there a value judgment on it? Um, so is herd immunity, this term, something that we want for Moab? And if so, how do we get to that point safely? I don't like the term herd immunity anymore because what herd immunity means scientifically and what herd immunity means in the rhetoric of today are completely separate things. And so do we want to have a natural immunity in our community? Of course, but really the only way to get to where that natural immunity is truly effective, effective is once we have a vaccine and can vaccinate over 90% of our population. So it's, it's not going to be anytime soon that we have the level of collective immunity that, that you want to see. Correct. You know, some natural immunities may be built up um, through natural exposure, but before that could ever reach a point where the entire community was protected would take, uh, would take a very long time. It's not something that can be gained by opening the, the faucet to Moab and drowning us in disease. That's, that's not the way to get to, to a point of natural protection. Brandon, you alluded last time we spoke about advertising travel to nearby areas, places that are near Moab, because we have a better understanding of what their case rates are, that sort of stuff. Are you still hoping to attract people strictly or mostly from nearby areas or certain places in Utah, Four Corners, or is it kind of just going to be open to whoever can make it here is going to be allowed? Part of that question would be better directed to, to those that advertise, but it's my understanding that there won't really be much advertising right now of, of Moab. There will be some availability, but, and people will find out about that. But though we would like to keep it, you know, people that are visiting Moab, we would like to know where they're coming from and, and that, that maybe it's not such a, a high risk area, but it is very difficult to police so to speak, or enforce is a better word to say that, but um, it's not it's not going to be part of uh, any sort of directive or rule that only people from such and such an area can be in Grand County. Uh, but we are working directly with the, the travel council um, to to do you know with what what advertising is going to happen to have that go to you know drivable distance from us and not hotspot areas and in reality i mean looking at visitation i mean it i think i think i can't guarantee that we're naturally going to see more people from close by coming i mean look at the sky there's no airplanes in the sky so there's all of this stuff and that buys us some more time and so naturally i think that we're going to have more local local movement um we we looked into the idea of maybe only allowing people from the state of utah but that would just it was it was made clear to us that it would be completely impractical with the way that booking sites work anyway but but feel pretty good about people from nearby visiting us and we know that things are getting better everywhere um those are all the questions i had prepared uh again i want to leave it open to let you guys add anything that we haven't talked about or emphasize something that uh you want to emphasize from what we've uh, already talked about. Just wear your facial coverings and get tested if you think there's any chance that you have a symptom. With more data, make, the more data we have, the better 
we are able to make the decisions that we're making. I'll just say that um, from a, the, the, part, the standpoint of the Southeast Utah Health Department, we are grateful for the sacrifices made by businesses and people to this point. We're grateful for the preparation <coughs> that Moab Regional Hospital has made that helps us to feel like we were in a place to remove some of the restrictions and, um, and continue to keep an eye on what is happening with COVID-19 in the community and be able to respond to that. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Sir. See ya.